Hi there, it's Johnny Miller from Point Blank Online Music School, back once more to show you some cool tricks with Ableton Live 8 and sounds and samples from clickproduce.com. Uh, tonight I'm experimenting a little bit with the Impulse device, which we mainly use in Ableton for drums. We, uh, we load in individual drum sounds into one of these eight uh, sample cells or pads, and then we can control and shape and mold the sounds uh, along with creating uh, MIDI clips with all our rhythms. Uh, but I'm going to use Impulse for something slightly different tonight. I'm going to load in some synth loops uh, into Impulse and use the way Impulse triggers sounds to create some really, really interesting effects on the loops. And for that, I'm going to use uh, a really cool pack uh, from Loop Masters called Dirty Dutch House. And in here, we've got, uh, you know, the standard Loop Masters quality, really, really high quality sounds, uh, a whole series of different loops, vocal loops, side chaining loops. They're really, really cool. Um, lead loops and drum loops and I've got a little drum loop here that I've just put in and this is just going to provide me with a little backing track for the tutorial tonight. Now the lead synth loops um, all seem to have a real kind of uh, street attitude to them and I think that's what sets this particular sound pack apart from other house music um, uh, sound packs. The, just the sort of attitude and edge to the loops. Uh, it, it, it's almost like there's, there's some kind of reference from reggaeton and, and bashment um, and uh, dance hall in these loops rhythmically but also just the flavor and I think you could use some of these sounds for you know hip-hop dubstep uh, not just uh, house and electro house if I just play some of these just all sorts of little interesting things quite a lot of pitch bending and side chaining And there's just loads and loads of things you could do with these loops. Now I find, found one that I quite like, this one. Uh, actually, it's not that one, it's this one. Toll Booth 2. Now, instead of just dragging that into Session View and making uh, you know, a track out of a loop, I'm going to use Impulse. I'm going to load that loop into Impulse and work with the very first part of that loop. Now I've got the sample inside Impulse. I'm going to start using all the different parameters of Impulse to create interesting kind of stretching effect sounds. And uh, if I just program up a MIDI clip quickly for this, I'm just going to create uh, just a little pattern like so, just to give me a little kind of rhythmic stab. Okay, let's solo that now and have a look at Impulse. Now the first parameter I'm going to start working with is decay and because I've got a loop in here if I bring the decay value right out it's going to play more of the loop every time each those MIDI notes are triggered we're going to hear more of the loop but you'll hear it gradually fading out especially if I hit stop So that's how impulse works. It plays the note, but it fades it out gradually over time. And the decay value determines how long it takes to fade out. If I take the decay value right up, we're only playing a tiny, tiny little bit of that first note of the loop. As I bring the decay out, I'm allowing more and more of the loop to play, including some of the second notes that you can just hear starting to creep in now. I can move the start point forward too to get a slightly different rhythmic effect. Let's put the beat on. Now what I want to do is show you a really cool trick with a stretch value as well. And what this does is it kind of squashes and stretches out each sample to create these glitchy effects when we bring the stretch value right down into the negative values. And what's happening there is we've got the long decay and the short stretch value and they're kind of like working almost against one another and creating inadvertently creating this kind of glitchy effect. If I bring the stretch value up What's happening there is the very beginning of the sample is being stretched right out. So again, working with the decay value, we get that interesting kind of stretched out but tailed off sound. 
and in minus figures something completely different. That would sound really nice if we add sidechain to this and if I uh, switch on the side chaining and take the input from audio one that's the beat and I'm just going to bring the threshold down and start to get a bit of a side chain kind of pump on here and for this I'm going to bring the ratio right up and instead of just working on the overall signal if I switch the EQ on and bring the uh, low shelf and the frequency value right down. Now the compressor is really going to work just on the kick drum from audio track number one. We get a lot more of a kind of heavy pump effect. So here, just again, I'm working back on that stretch value now to create a really, really interesting effect. maybe moving the start value back a slightly different variation now of course we can use stuff like clip envelopes and transposing to change the pitch of our sample So this is completely, you know, against what Impulse is kind of designed to do, which is playback drum samples. We're using uh, the device and the functions on here that are normally used for drums to stretch out how the beginning of a loop plays. The sidechain action with the compressor just brings in that extra sort of contemporary dance music value uh, where we're getting a nice kind of pumping effect. It works really, really well with the drums. Okay, you can learn loads of cool tricks like this at pointblankonline.net and I'll be back again next week to show you more cool tricks with uh, Ableton Live 8 and sounds and samples from clickproduce.com. Peace.